This is video number 18 in our series, Topics in Quantum Mechanics. Uh, again, a reminder that the playlist for all of the videos in this series, the playlist is at digital-university.org at the website. Okay, in this video, we want to consider the momentum position commutator. And you will see it quite often designated like this. Now, for our discussion, we're considering just a one-dimensional situation where a quantum mechanical particle is moving along on the x-axis. So the position is just simply x. This is the momentum. And remember that in quantum mechanics, and again, just in one dimension, the momentum has this form, minus i h bar, taking the partial of something with respect to x. Now, the commutator then is just this times this minus this times you're operating on this. That's it when it's expanded out. So what exactly does it mean? And the best way to understand that is, well, let's examine what effects the commutator has on a function. Suppose that here is our commutator, x of p. And here is some function, psi. Say this is a function of x. Not only of x, say it's also a function of, uh, say, t, for example. So what effect would this have, this commutator, on this function? So this would be x px minus p sub x x. Psi. Only let's rewrite this now using our definition of p of x, the momentum on the x-axis. So this would be equal to x, and this is minus i, h bar, the partial with respect to x, then we have minus minus i h bar, the partial with respect to x, then we have x, and then out here is psi. So if we bring psi inside, we're going to have the partial of psi with respect to x. This will become a plus sign. And then here we're taking the partial of x times psi. So let's see what this gives us. Here we have this will equal minus i h bar x, the partial of psi with respect to x. Then from here we have plus i h bar. And now we're going to take the derivative of a product. So we will have, here we'll have x times the partial of psi with respect to x plus psi times the partial of x with respect to x. It looks like these two terms right here will cancel. And this is just 1. So what we have is this is just simply equal to i h bar times psi. So the, commu the commutator of this, written like this, operating on psi, just simply multiplies the function psi by i h bar. And really, that's all there is to it um, concerning this momentum um, position uh, commutator. 
one other thing that we can say, suppose that we had a commutator similar to this, but instead of having just the coordinate x and the momentum, suppose that we just had a some function of x. Again, operating on psi. What kind of result would this give us? Well, if we went through the whole process, like we did up here, with x of p, what will happen is, here, instead of having x, we would have f of x. And instead of that being x, that would be f of x. So those two terms would still cancel. And then here, instead of taking the partial of x with respect to x, we would be taking the partial of f of x with respect to x. Like this. So now what we end up with is these two terms cancel, and we have i h bar psi times this partial derivative. So this. will equal i h bar psi times the partial derivative of f of x with respect to x. So it's a little bit more complicated, but not much. But we bring this to your attention because we will use this result in the future videos. Like what kind of a function would be a function of x? Well, if we're considering a particle moving on the x-axis, and there's a potential function. And quite often, the potential function depends upon position. So the potential function could be some function of x. And in which case, when we have the commutator like this, we'll get this kind of an expression. And again, we'll use this result in the future videos. OK, that's it for this video. Um, come back, join us for the next video, and we're going to consider what happens when we try to consider the average value of quantum mechanical properties.